it's amazing that such a small park, the world's smallest, can generate such long-reaching and wide-ranging interest. And obviously, I mean, if you look at it, the north side of the park here is completely different than the south side of the park. Or way over on the west side, it's different plants and veg vegetation than there is on the east side. So completely different park experience no matter where you go in this park. Looks like we've had some uh, additions, we'll call it community-driven volunteer efforts, putting up some fencing in the park, which uh, I will move here. And there was a couple of little figurines. There was a pig, there was a cow, and there was an armed guard with a bazooka, a little army figurine that was protecting the park. Uh, when a recent uh, controversy erupted from across the pond, the British claiming that this wasn't indeed the world's smallest park, and of course it is. Portland's been called the country's greenest city, so you can see it when you fly in from the airport, trees everywhere. It's part of the, uh, the benefit we get from having all the rain that we get is that life grows here, plants grow here, trees grow here really well. And so the, the things that make Portland green are as wide ranging as the urban forest in Portland itself. Mill Ends Park is tiny, but it's got a huge history and a huge following all across the world now, dating back from 1948. There used to be a building next to us that housed the Oregon Journal newspaper. And a columnist for the newspaper named Dick Fagan overlooked the spot. And as you can see, tell it's a circular spot. A light pole was originally supposed to go in here. For one reason or another, the light pole never materialized. So Mr. Fagan took it upon himself to do plantings in the park, and he called it uh, Mill Ends Park after his column, which was called Mill Ends. And he declared it as the first leprechaun colony and the only leprechaun colony west of Ireland. And he wrote stories about Patrick O'Toole, the leprechaun patriarch who had adventures and such in here. And who am I to disprove it? Just because they're not answering the door right now doesn't mean they're not there. It's got uh, you know people who take care of it just like any other city park. Our Portland Parks and Recreation folks, they have it on their list of responsibilities to check it out. Oh, probably go water mill ends. Okay, done. You can have a picnic in the park if you're small enough to fit, or you can hang out next to the park like we're doing now. And this park was occupied during Occupy Portland as well. There was uh, a fence around it with some uh, militant figures, I believe. It's been looked at as something that's just part of the city's fabric and part of our weirdness, and we embrace it wholeheartedly. There's just a lot of quirky things that go on in the Northwest. We're kind of the epicenter of that. Um, maybe we're just small enough to not be so busy to overlook opportunities to enjoy things like this. Maybe it's just part of the thing that makes us different than other cities. Um, whatever the reason, we're just glad to have Mill Ends and as part of Portland's weirdness and be able to enjoy it every day.